Right, welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today on this webinar, why web mapping is more than publishing GIS data. Just to get some admin things out of the way before we begin, the session will be about 45 minutes and we'll be sending out the recording link by email afterwards. Time permitting, we'll be having a question and answer session at the end. There's a question panel on the right where you can type and submit your questions at any time throughout the webinar. So please do and we'll pick on those, pick those up at the end. We'd also be grateful at the end if you could complete our short survey, which will pop up and that will help us with future webinars. And finally, just to let you know, you're in listen only mode, so we can't hear you. Just to introduce ourselves today, my name is Demelza Potter. I work in the business development team here at CACORP and I predominantly work with uh, local and central government customers, helping them to make the most from their GIS investment. My co-presenter today is Simon Parker, who is going to provide our live demonstrations of wrong. So these are the points um, we'll be covering today. Starting with a little bit about CADCorp, as I know some of you that are listening are new to CADCorp, then we'll be taking a look at the ways we can utilise web mapping across your organisation. And that's um, from a, a variety of things, from embedding maps, creating data analysis and beyond. Simon will then show you that in practice. And after Simon's demo, I'll pick up on um, why the, or how the cloud is an enabler for, for web mapping just before rounding up at the end and answering your questions. So a little bit about CADCOP. We are a UK based and we are UK based and focus on the development and delivery of our product CADCOP SIS, which includes web, mobile and desktop GIS applications. And we work across various sectors, the ones you see on screen and more, selling directly in the UK and Ireland and through a partner network worldwide. So thought we'd kick off, oops, thought we'd kick off with a poll this morning. So I'm just gonna launch that. Okay. So does your current, does your organisation currently use web mapping? I can see you all voting on screen, so we'll leave that going a few seconds while I see those numbers change and I'll uh, let you know what percentage is yes and what percentage is no. Okay, thank you for voting. So it looks like we are currently 81% yes and 19% no, um, which is interesting. So let's um, close and click on. So hopefully we can show you um, today techniques to make the most of your web mapping for the 80% of you that already have it. And for those of you who don't, um, the 20%, uh, we can show you what the possibilities actually are within your organisation. So perhaps you're here today because you're putting together a business case for um, web mapping. Uh, perhaps you're just here to keep up with um, CADCOP technologies and what we've been working on. So these are the things we'll be looking at um, to cover today. So. Here in the background is CAGOPSIS web map, simply publishing some business data. As the title of the webinar implies, when we think about web mapping, um, most people think about publishing a map for people to see, um, click on and perhaps print from. Quite a simple application. And Simon will show you how simple web mapping can actually be to set up uh, for this purpose. What we should also remember is that um, web mapping users want access to this same published data from any device, anywhere. So yes, publishing content is often important. However, chances are you will want more than map, more than one map. Typically, the one map that you see on screen is not gonna 
fit everyone's purposes. And also um, an administrator level, you might want to lock down access to certain maps um, with free access to public users, depending on um, how sensitive data is, implementing a security model um, to allow multiple maps with different users with different access permissions. So having multiple maps with a security model is, is one benefit um, available with web mapping. And uh, other benefits might include, for example, sharing a web map across um, social media or even embedding maps. This is um, an example of industrial estate locations, fairly static data in where the focus um, the user is on a particular context and location. We can take that one step further. This example here showing live fire incident data, so more dynamic data across a county with further detail about incidents being supplied uh, to the user on screen as well. And you may also have a requirement to um, embed maps in other applications. Here is a Power BI example um, showing road traffic collisions, um, their locations um, on the map, but alongside other important associated information, such as graphs, dates, time, statistics, all combining to provide a complete picture for the user. And we shouldn't forget the work Kekort partners do, for example, to integrate web mapping into their applications. This is an example uh, from Aligned Assets. These examples keep web mapping consistent across your organization because they're being sourced centrally from, from one mapping application. So what we're interested in is um, bringing content together and potentially bringing your own data or creating data into the mix as well. So starting at the top here, I expect you'll want to utilize data from different back office systems. So that might be assets, land, incidents, your own business data that you hold within your organization. Moving to the right, you might want to create and edit your business data. For example, it might be um, creating inspection reports on assets. So data is being continually updated. Moving to the bottom, data from third party sources, um, data formats from other organizations, like for example, the Environment Agency or Office National Statistics, or you may even crowdsource data, but you want to bring that together into your web mapping application. And finally, on the left, you might want to look at something in Google Street View, for example, so related spatial data, or perhaps even non-spatial records um, found in other websites that you can link to. Uh, so once we've got all that content, we want to bring it together in one location and analyze it in real time. So analysis might be a simple click, what's the name of this school we've just clicked on it might be more complex as a spatial query it might be creating a pdf report and when we think of simplified access for public users it's important to make it as easy as possible we try and do that uh, in, in this example uh, with local knowledge this is um, a service which basically says, tell me everything about this location or this address. So what's here, what's near, how many are near, how far are they, and all statistic and statistics all calculated from real time uh, content that I discussed earlier. So as you move around the map, that information changes as appropriate. And we need to think about whether we need a map at all. Here is a product called Notice Board. It's the information here that's important, not the map. Something you might also want to consider is an open API for developers so that bespoke functionality uh, can be developed specifically for you, or you might want to integrate with other systems or other APIs in your organization. Kekop 
uh, often provide add-ins for specialist purposes, but all, ca all CACOP customers can develop these themselves. And finally, I'm adding web mapping services to the mix. You are likely to want to both consume and publish data that is OGC compliant. Now we're looking beyond the user interface. You want an engine that sits behind the user interface, which allows you to push out business data for others to consume and incorporate um, with their systems. This enhances the map, but it's created, created and managed elsewhere. Typically, OGC WMS or web, web map services are used, but there are other OGC methods that I've put on screen as well. So it might be OGC or it might be just other third party background mapping that you might want to utilize from a supplier like Google Maps. All of that should be possible within your web mapping. Right, I'm now going to pass over to Simon to show you in practice some of these topics in why web mapping is more than publishing GIS data. Um, I'm going to pick up on questions are towards the end, so please continue to answer in the question panel on the right. And I'll just swap presenters. And leave you over to you, Simon. Thank you, Demelza, and good morning. Uh, so my demonstration today is going to show that uh, web mapping is not just about publishing a map. I'm going to be using CAD Corpsis web map to show you some examples of how you can use web mapping for other purposes. We all want our web mapping, or, or we all want our mapping to be at the forefront of our business decisions. So hopefully the examples I'm going to show you today will allow you to not only expand the use of GIS and web mapping, but also provide more value for your investment in GIS technology. So in its um, <clears throat> simplest form, CAD Corp Web Map can be used to uh, publish a map of GIS data to a wider audience. And this can allow uh, colleagues, contractors, or members of the public to view spatial information on a map. Web Map is simple to use, and so it doesn't require any formal training. And it can also be accessed from any device or browser, wherever you are. Now, a single map, uh, cannot provide all the spatial information you might want to share. You might have a lot of data, so a single map will just become too unwieldy for the, un for the end user. In WebMap, you can publish as many maps as you like, and we recommend that your map should reflect the business need of the end user. So you could set up uh, multiple maps for different business areas or purposes, so that each map only contains uh, so the business data that is needed. And not only does this provide better performance, but you also have a more concise list of layers, which also makes the user experience a friendly one. So here is a list of all the maps I've got available in my web map. And I've got five different maps for some of the public and private sectors which CADCorp work with. If your colleagues need access to a variety of maps, then you could deploy this page as your welcome page, giving your users the choice of which map to open. And it's not just uh, business data um, we need to think about. The end user might be a, a light user, uh, maybe an analyst who needs to make business decisions, or maybe a member of the public. Each map can be tailored, not just by data requirements, but functionality as well. The administrator can control these settings in the web map admin interface. So for every map, we can go to its settings and the administrator has full control for which functionality is available in each map. And it's very simple to manage. We can simply tick and untick the relevant functionality and boxes as required. So let me just show you an example. So I'm going to return back to the welcome page and I'm going to open up my government map. And this map has been enabled to have all the functionality that's available uh, within web map. So in the top right hand corner, for instance, we can see we've got loads of different options available to the user. And if we go to the opposite corner under the what would you like to do, we can see we've got loads of options available. 
Let me now return back to the welcome page and let's now open my police map. And this map has been set up with limited functionality for the end user. So in the top right hand corner, we can see we've just got a few um, options available here. And again, if I return to the top left hand corner, under the what would you like to do menu, again, you've just got um, a number of functions available for, for, for the user of this map. Publishing your data across multiple maps also gives the administrator control on who can access the maps and your data. So you could have all maps accessible to everybody, but as Demelza mentioned, if you've got uh, sensitive data um, that should only be accessible to, to some, then you can enable security on web map to manage its accessibility. Now this might be forms authentication where the user must enter a username and password, or it could be Windows authentication where the organization's Active Directory can be used for single sign-on. Now, if we return back to the admin interface, the administrator can manage these permissions in the security section. So you have the option to manage permissions by users or groups. And for myself, I'm going to manage the permission for my user, which is called CADCORP. And in this list here, we can see all the maps I have available to me as that CADCorp user. If I decide to disable some of those maps, so maybe I'm going to disable the health map, police map and fire map, and then I'm going to update those settings. Now, if I close my browser session so that the new settings can take effect, then uh, reopen uh, the welcome page. First of all, we're prompted for a username and password to enter web map. And this is because I've got forms authentication enabled. So if I log in as my CADCorp user, I can now see that I've only got two maps available for me to access. So it's nice and easy to control the accessibility of your data and define what functionality each user or group of users have across your organization. So far in this demonstration, we have been looking at the mapping data in the web map interface. And I'll be returning back to WebMap shortly to show you some of its functionality. With WebMap, you can also share and embed these maps. So with every WebMap installation, comes a, it comes with a HTML file with an embedded map example. And it only takes uh, two lines of code to embed a map from WebMap into your website. So if you're a local authority, this could be a map showing your, um, your council owned car parks. If you're a social housing organization, maybe it's a map showing um, available properties to rent. Or if you're a blue light organization, it could be a map showing incidents or call outs in the last 24 hours. You can also customize your embedded map with the controls that you need. So you can have a static map, or perhaps you want to add pan or zoom controls to the embedded map. You can add features such as a scale bar, you can add a key map so that you can provide extra geographical context to the, the current map location. In the bottom right hand corner, we've got uh, mouse coordinates. And you can also enable get feature on the data and on the map so that the user can interrogate the data in the embedded map. All of these parameters are simply added to your embedded map URL so that you can control what functionality is available in your embedded map. Recent to web map is the ability to embed the quick search functionality with an embedded map. So this allows a user to maybe search for an address and the embedded map will zoom to the selected location. So in this map, I've got um, GP surgeries and I'm going to search for a specific surgery in York. So I'm gonna add that into my quick search. And then I've enabled the results of my quick search to be listed on the right hand side. And if I click on one of the results, we can see that um, we have now been taken to that location of that surgery within the embedded map. You can also embed a web map into Microsoft Power BI. And a Power BI report provides business intelligence to the decision makers in your organization. So here I've created a report using data from the Police UK website, and this is crime data for the City of London. So the report contains a number of visuals, uh, which include showing us the total uh, crime count, 
we've got a bar chart underneath uh, showing us the number of crimes by crime type. And then here we've got a pie chart showing us the outcomes of each of these crimes. But most importantly, we have our map embedded into the report. And this is showing us pins for each of the crime locations. Every visual and the map are interlinked. So when I want to filter the data and maybe see the crimes that occurred in February only, um, we'll see that all the visuals and the maps update. And for the map specifically, we can see uh, pins for all the crimes that occurred in February. And if I want to maybe filter the data even further, so maybe for our crime type, I'm interested in drug related crime. Again, as I apply that filter, we can see all the visuals and the map update accordingly. So there's much more to web map than just its interface. You have the ability to use the technology across different platforms. So CADCORPSIS technology is a great facilitator in bringing content um, from different back office systems and formats together into one place. And the technology supports connectivity to over 300 data formats. So this could be a GIS file format. It could be um, plain text files like CSV, um, rasters, or database connections to PostGIS, SQL Server, or Oracle. You can also enhance your business information by adding links to other resources. This can bring all of your content together into a single place. So WebMap becomes a one-stop shop for your users to view all the information they need. Let me just show you some examples. So here on the map, I've got some schools data and I want to interrogate this specific school. So as well as the geometry I have for my schools data and some basic information around its name and postcode, we also have the school's unique reference number as a unique identifier. And that means I can use this to link to other data resources. So the first link in my example takes me to the Ofsted website so I can see the latest report and see what the current Ofsted rating is for this school. I can view school performance data again from a central government website and I can see how pupils are progressing with their reading, writing and maths. I might also want to see financial information. Again, I can just see if the school is balancing its books. And again, this is information being provided by a central government website. Or you can have a hyperlink to files such as PDFs, Word documents, images or spreadsheets. And this hyperlink allows me to download detailed data about the school, again, from a central government website. And I can view this information in a spreadsheet and I can see information such as how many boys and how many girls are enrolled in this school. So these examples I've shown you are great because we're just one click away from getting the latest government information about the schools. The same can be said if you're directing users to your own documentation uh, or website. You can also use the geometry of the data to add uh, additional spatial references as well. So you might have a hyperlink to Google Street View. So perhaps I intend on visiting the school and it will be useful just to check Google Street View so I can see where the front entrance of that school is. And for the final two examples, I'm going to switch focus to the mobile interface of WebMap. So I'm going to connect to the WebMap demonstrator available on the CADCorp website and show you what this looks like on a mobile device. So this is web map on a mobile device and it's gone to my current location. So I'm just going to pan to the west and in the top left hand corner, I'm going to turn on my school's information. If I tap on one of those schools, again, we can see all of the um, attribute information I have for the school. And if I hit the link for Google directions, it will create directions using the current location of my device to the school that I've just selected. Now, because I live in a new housing estate, Google Maps sometimes has trouble creating a route for me. So instead, I could use Waze, um, which is a free navigation app. So I can create a link which automatically produces a route from my current location to the school. I can view an overview of the route on the map. So I can see, see where we're going. 
And then I can hit recenter to take me back to my location to start the navigation to the school. And this can work well with any point data, such as maybe take me to the nearest recycling center or NHS service. So I'm now just going to disconnect my device and return back to my desktop. So in addition to bringing our content together, you can also use editing capabilities in web map to create, edit and delete your data. So I'm going to zoom into a particular area in York. I'm going to turn on my editing options in web map. And what I have here is a grounds maintenance layer and I need to add this piece of grass to that layer. So to do this in the editing capabilities, I'm going to create this as a new polygon. I'm going to enable snapping because I can snap to um, underlying master map data. And then on the map, we can then start to capture the geometry of that item, snapping to the master map layer. So we're capturing that uh, piece of grass accurately. Once I've captured the geometry, I can then add some attribute information. So here I'm going to classify my data as public open space. So I can pick from predefined uh, drop down lists. And I'm also going to set this to a two weekly grass cutting cycle. I've now saved that feature in web map. I've now created that new feature to my grounds maintenance layer. In addition to creating data, I can edit existing data as well. So let's just pan to the west and I'm going to turn on some street light data. So this street light data is themed to show um, if, a, if a street light is shown green, then it's working. And if it's shown as red, um, it's got a fault. And I've got a report that a street light is not working. So I can change this status in web map. So to do this, I'm going to select the street light in question. I'm going to edit its attributes. And then at the bottom, I can change its status from working to not working. And you will see when I confirm the change that the street light will now be themed accordingly and it will show up as a red street light on the map. So this, talk, so this means that anyone in your organization can view the most up-to-date information in the map. New data can also be created by the report tool. This tool is designed to allow users to report on issues or problems that the administrator defines. In this example, I've got some problem, problems that a member of public, that members of a public might want to report on. So for example, I want to report an, a, an abandoned vehicle outside my property, and I'm going to click on the map where that uh, abandoned vehicle is located. And then next, I just need to provide some details. So I'm going to add my email address. I can then provide some comments about the abandoned vehicle. So maybe I'll say the vehicle, um, has been left outside of my property for 10 days. I can also attach an image to the report. So maybe I've gone out on my uh, mobile device and I've taken a picture of that abandoned vehicle so I can uh, apply that and attach that to, to my report. And then finally, we also have a security check as well, just to confirm that I am human. Once I hit submit, that report can be sent as an email to the team who need to, res to respond to that report, but it can also be saved in a database layer as well. I've made that layer available in this map. So before we turn it on, let me just turn off some of the data we've been working on uh, recently. So that's our grounds maintenance and our streetlight data. And we'll now turn on the report layer. So on the map, we can see that the report I've just created is already available to me immediately on the map. And we can see there is a label above the report to show the date and time when the report was submitted. Now, if I click on that report, I can see all the information I provided in my report. Again, I can see an image um, of, uh, of the, um, the abandoned vehicle that I provided in the report. So again, this is another example of linking to data outside of web map. I also have a link to an email template so that if I was the person dealing with the report within the organization and I can respond to that person who provided the report with an update. So not only does um, web, web map bring content together, 
but you can also create and manage data through editing and reporting capabilities. So whether I'm a, a light user, a member of the public or an analyst, WebMap can provide a real-time analysis or information at a single click. The administrator can set up a number of predefined queries to commonly ask questions and local knowledge can be used to present uh, the results of these queries to the user in a friendly way. So using the center location of my map, my analysis is telling me uh, which ward I'm in and who my councillor is. I can see information about when my bins are due for collection. As we scroll down, we've got further information around my nearest electrical charging point, so I can see where I can charge my vehicle when I leave my property. There's analysis around antisocial behaviour, uh, how many crime reports of um, ASB have occurred within five kilometres of my location. And then finally, we've also got uh, a find my nearest type search again, show me where my nearest public toilets are. Again, these are just some examples of what you can do with local knowledge, but you can set up your own queries depending on what data you have and what the business need is for the end user. And the results of local knowledge are working in conjunction with the map here, but what if there's a scenario where we don't want a map? We could use a product like Notice Board to provide this information, but in a different way. So I'm going to search for a uh, a specific address. So I'm going to type in a postcode and the house number. And when I click on that address, this time instead of seeing a map, we're getting all the information we need but in the dashboard. So on the left hand side, again, we've got our councillor information, information about our bins underneath. In the centre, we've got information about whether we're in a flood risk area. And of course, you can include an embedded map in Notice Board if you wish. And then on the right, we've got information about our nearest GP surgeries and information about uh, crimes in the area. And finally, what if we just want to have the information behind this? We can connect to the local knowledge web services directly using a post request and query the spatial data using a pair of coordinates. <laughs> you can then feed this information into your own website or another application. Now, there are a couple of different local knowledge web services uh, available to choose from. And these are all described in more detail on the CAD Corp online help. But just as an example, I'm going to query my local knowledge. So I'm going to supply some coordinates and query that data. Now, if like me, uh, you're not a developer, then this type of response from a web service might look overwhelming. However, when you look at it more closely, it's actually not too bad. You can see the results of the local knowledge queries in the response. So you might remember from my um, <clears throat> local knowledge in web map, um, the first query was around which constituency I was in. So we can see the beginning of the results of this at the top here under my your constituency name. If we look further down in the response, we can see the attribute information in the results. So I can see our councillor information. So we can see that Sonia Copeland is a councillor for the um, Eastings and Northings that I sent to, to the local knowledge web service. And further down, we can see uh, which ward we're in. So we can see the ward is the Trinity Ward. So to a developer or web guru, they can take this response and then use it for their own purpose. Web map can also be used as part of your business processes. In a local government setting, for example, you might need to perform analysis as part of your planning application process. You're required to evaluate what constraints and existing planning applications are present for a new planning application. Now, Find It for Web Map enables you to query a large number of layers and then create a report of the findings to be included as part of this process. You can define your area of search in four ways. You can draw a freehand area um, and enable snapping so you can snap to your underlying master map data. You may want to select an existing feature, so maybe you've already captured your planning application boundary in Web Map or, in, or somewhere else and you can select that polygon in web map to use your search. You may want to select a single or multiple master map features to create your area of search. Or finally, you can just simply place a point on the map and create a buffer. Now to save some time in this demonstration, I'm going to show you an example of a report it can produce. So here I've created a planning constraints report with a find it service. 
So my front page has given me some details about my search. So I performed the search this morning. And then underneath these details, we can see a map which shows us the, the area of search we used. Now the following pages provide the results of my search. So I can see all the constraints and planning applications that intercept my area of search. So first of all, we've just got some location information. So it's telling us which local authority and ward my search was performed in. Uh, my search has found that there's an existing planning application. It's also telling me that we're in the Bishop Thorpe uh, conservation area. Um, we're also in a flood map area. And then finally, we've got information that there's a tree preservation order present in my, near my area of search. Now, find it isn't just restricted to local authority users, as I've shown in this example. Where you have a requirement to query loads of data at once and produce a report, then find it is the tool for the job. So I've shown you a lot of functionality that is available with WebMap. But what if you have a specific requirement that requires a custom workflow? CADCOPSIS WebMap includes its own API, which allows developers to write their own add-ins with custom workflows, dialogues, and functionality. And again, there is a nice section on the CADCOP online help, which discusses these options. CADCOP can help you with any custom development work you may require. An example project we worked on was a what three words integration for a blue light organization. So if you're not familiar with what three words, the world has been split into three meter squares and each square has a unique three word address. Now this integration works in two ways. It allows the user to click a location on the map and get the what three word address. So if we just click somewhere here on the map, we can see that the uh, unique address for this location is pose drift lived. Or you can simply enter a known what three word address and let the map take you to that location. So just as an example, I've got a, a what three word address called active shots crowned. And then if we hit search, it then takes us to that location on the map. You may have read that there are many sort of case studies in the media where 999 callers have used a what three word address to direct the emergency services to their location. And if you're interested in this integration, CADCorp and what Three words are delivering a joint webinar on the 10th of June, and there are further details available on the CADCorp website. And finally, behind the WebMap user interface is a geoprocessing engine which allows us to incorporate third-party data that might be created and managed elsewhere. But it can also be used to push out your own business data for others to consume as well. Geognosis is our geoprocessing engine, and administrators can manage it via browser. You can set up OGC services like a web map service, a web map feature service, or as an example, a web map tile service. I've got three services running here. I've got some aerial imagery data. I've got ordnance survey data in color and, and the same in, in grayscale as well. And not only are these services consumed within web map, but we can share the URL to other software and system so they can access the same data. This makes it really nice and easy to manage the data and ensure that all systems are using the same but most up-to-date mapping. So I've now come to the end of my demonstration today and I hope you have found that very useful. Just to summarize, we looked at how web map can be used to share and embed maps across your organization, whether that be in web map, on a website or in Microsoft Power BI. WebMap can also be used to bring all of your content together, whether that be data from different back office uh, systems, data formats, or third party websites. Real time analysis can be performed with local knowledge. This could be in WebMap itself, uh, in a dashboard style like Notice Board, or from a web service so that you can develop your own conduit for the information. You can also integrate tools like Find It and Report It into your own business processes. And then finally, we explored sort of the development opportunities to provide new workflows or functionality in WebMap. And then looked at how Geognosis can be used to publish and share information to other systems and users. I'm now going to pass you back over to Demelza, who will wrap up and answer any questions. Thank you, Simon. Just come back to my screen. 
Okay, just some final thoughts before I wrap up um, today. Um, with web mapping, um, I thought we'd talk about just briefly um, the fact that there are a number of deployment options. So increasingly more organizations are choosing to host applications, including web mapping and databases in the cloud. By taking the web mapping application off site, there are multiple benefits. Um, and with Kaggle Web Map, for example, that Simon showed you today, it's the same application, but just provided and managed from a virtual platform as opposed to being in sort of a dingy server room at the end of your corridor somewhere in your organization. I'll come back to sort of the, the benefits uh, more in the next slide of cloud, but just to um, mention on site as a deployment option as the more traditional um, option, if you like. But actually, most implementations CAGOP have been involved in so far follow a more hybrid approach where some elements of the solution are on site and some elements are in the cloud. And then, important to mention, no two implementations we've done are, have been the same. So please ask us about deployment um, where the software is actually very flexible and we will work with you to achieve sort of your IT requirements. Um, often the choice is led by IT policy, like for example, a cloud first strategy, but consideration of cloud should always be made when upgrading existing products or if there are resource or structural changes within your organizations, this is the time to sort of be thinking about it. So how is the cloud an enabler for web mapping? I just mentioned that organizational resource changes um, uh, within your organization, if you're facing a, a reduction of workforce, for example, um, a cloud implementation is likely to, to pr prove very beneficial as a managed service. Also, there are no or less hard le hardware requirements that are likely. Project time is dramatically reduced. It's easy for us to fire up a hosted instance. There's no waiting for your IT departments. You're likely to see off network speed improvements as another benefit. Um, and there's also improved resilience offered by hosting platforms. So Kaggle used Microsoft Azure um, and they provide us um, uptime um, assurances, um, which we can obviously pass on um, to yourselves. Also security and technology involved. This really does facilitate working from home or in fact working from anywhere. And I expect suddenly we see the benefits um, of us all sort of business as usual working from home as, as we currently are. And lastly, the cost of ownership is reduced because of really each of the benefits combined on the above points. So if you're writing a business case, hopefully the information we've provided today is useful. However, please contact us if um, you are and CACOP can help you out further. Um, Simon can put together live demonstrations aimed specifically um, at, at your audience within your organizations. Um, we've got a consultative approach to infrastructure design based on our experiences. As I said, we can work with you. We have example specifications available and we're here to answer your questions, including sort of the niggly ones that you might have from your IT departments. So key takeaways just rounding up today, web mapping really can and should be more than just publishing GIS data. And hopefully we've shown you lots of examples of this in practice. Um, we want you to make the most of your web mapping investment by ensuring you utilize all the bits of functionality that are available across your organizations. And finally, because of the clear benefits it offers, um, please take a look at cloud as a platform, as it's clear to us as a GIS provider that increasingly this is the direction most are taking. So we are going to take a look at your questions please continue to answer i can see we've got a few available which i can look at answering now so the first one from lorraine 
um, what data can the quick search can the quick search use? So the quick search is the typically the um, address panel that you saw at the top of the screen. Um, that quick search can actually use any database table with an X and Y in um, and provide um, a location. So typically that is an address, um, but it can be a reference reference number, so an asset reference number or planning application number, as long as there's an X and a Y for the application to center on. Um, the quick search also supports um, aligned asset single search and a number of the OS open data APIs like OS places as well. So you've got really got a, a variety of options there in terms of what you connect your quick search to and you can have multiple searches in there as well so you're not restricted to one database table. Thanks Lorraine. Um, we've got a couple of questions about editing. Um, so Ronnie, when, ed when editing Okay, does editing right back to the database or data source um, it's pulling from? So yes, it does. Um, typically, we recommend um, it, the data coming from uh, a database and it's immediately written back to the database when an edit is made. Um, and I think Adam's got a question sort of following on from that. Um, so you showed some editing functionality. Can data be created from elsewhere? So yeah, Simon showed creating of a grounds maintenance polygon, um, and that was from within the web mapping application. Um, but you can use Kagapsys desktop, for example, or any other GIS client to edit or create data. What's more important is that the data is stored centrally in a database, and that allows security to be enabled. So only the correct users um, can edit or access that data, especially important if it's sensitive data. Um, Judith, is there a method of monitoring hits for particular maps? So there is for externally accessible maps. Um, we'd recommend using Google Analytics to tell you a bit more about the number and, and hits that you're getting to those web maps. Okay, do we have any more questions come in since I've been talking? Could users use OpenStreetMap base mapping if they wanted to? Yes, you certainly can. OpenStreetMap is one of the options for base mapping if that's what you would prefer to use. There are um, a number of different options in terms of um, base maps. Right, just scrolling through, see if we have any others. I think that's all I can see on screen at the moment. If I have um, missed any apologies, we will come back to you directly as we've got your, um, uh, your the name uh, and your contact details um, and we can come back to you directly on those questions. Um, if you think of anything after the webinar, I'd like to discuss anything in more detail, please feel free to contact myself or your CACOP account manager if you have one, or indeed please use the general sales contact details on screen at the moment. If you'd like to speak to a CACOP colleague today, there's a checkbox on the feedback form when you exit the webinar and that will allow you to request that and we'll get back to you this afternoon. Just one final thing, um, we hope you're enjoying um, our series of webinars. Um, due to current demand, we're continuously adding um, to this list of uh, webinars. Here are the next few. Simon's already mentioned the What Three Words webinar on the 10th. Um, I've touched on cloud web mapping today, but on the 23rd, I'll be focusing on desktop um, in the cloud. Um, you can register from the events page of the CACOP website. Uh, you'll also find uh, recordings of previous webinars archived there as well. So please do come and join us. Um, 
We'd really appreciate um, today if you could take the time to complete our short feedback survey, which will pop up when you exit. Um, we really want to continue delivering webinars uh, in future that meet your needs. Thank you for attending today, and we look forward to your presence at future CACOP events. Goodbye for now.